welcome to Meet the Maker. Today I'm talking to the fantastic Joanne of the Sweet Kindred Clothing. So hello Joanne, come and tell us all about you and your business and give us all the gossip. I, I'm Jo, I'm the face behind Sweet Kindred Clothing. Um, I make children's clothes. I started, oh my goodness, nine and a half, ten years ago, um, doing the odd bits of bunting and that's when I started my sewing. I was expecting my daughter, um, so she's nine and a half now, and making cushions and stuff. Um, when she was about 18 months old, I decided I wanted to make some dresses for her. Super quickly learned that I really don't like buttons and zips. <laughs> so, um, yeah, very quickly learned that lesson after I spent a week and a half trying to put a zip in and unpicking it and repicking it. So I swiftly moved on to Jersey um, fabric, which I love because it's just poppers on the shoulders if it's rompers and stuff um it's very simple to sew with um and my friends just said to me oh you should really sell that and so i was like that's absolutely fine put it off for another four years and then decided actually do you know what i will so here i am now i started in 2018 um so coming up actually two two years now um entering my third year in april um and yeah so here i am fantastic wow so what age range of clothes do you make? So I do newborn up to um, adults straight away. It's, I, so do the adults get the poppers as well? The, oh, wow, you say that. Yes, some do. Um, some <laughs> do request them. If they, um, yeah, I've got a couple of customers that do, if I make them adult dungarees or adult rompers, um, yeah. then yeah, they get poppers as well. But predominantly it's naught to 10 years, but I go up and above on request. Right. Uh, I don't limit myself to just children. So does that mean you've had to get past the buttons and the, the zippers or zips? I don't know where zippers came from. Zips? No, I still don't do anything with zips and buttons. <laughs> adults get, um, <laughs> a adults get um, leggings or, um, so, <sighs> or um, lounge trousers. So you don't need any of that? Any of that I don't need any. It's T-shirts, it's dresses. And because it's jersey, it's stretchy. So like this one stretches so you don't need anything to so if you made the one you're wear, you're wearing yeah this was just i really needed something new so i just flung it together it's i just cut a shape out and sewn it together it's <laughs> supposed to be not a proper pattern but i like it and it's comfortable that's what it's all about isn't it particularly right now as we're in lockdown i think everything's about comfort love the fabric it's all really colorful are they like teardrops yeah, raindrops raindrops teardrops um different colors so they are pretty awesome different sizes um so yeah this is one of my favorite ones um yeah so i thought i'd you know i've got to try it i try all of the fabrics <laughs> um, i love that so fabric the i do know with you and your business that choosing your fabric is something that's really really important to you isn't it it is um it has to be right for me um i don't um kind of like what everyone else has either i try and um have different stuff because obviously if we're all making the same rompers for instance in the same fabrics we're all fighting together so yes. i try to move away um i preferred it when i could go into a shop and touch fabric i love touching fabric um because again you still don't know although you can read descriptions and it says it's so much in weight um and and stuff you can't guarantee it sometimes yeah. i ordered some fabric as a tester i now have um seven exclusives um i'm waiting for six to send off to the printers um i sent one off just to have a test to see uh, the meter come back and it was horrible horrible fabric it was oh. thin flimsy and i'm like ah oh, now i've got this fabric that i can't do anything with because i don't want to sell it even just saying do you know what here yeah. have it I, I can't do it it's because it goes against the whole I like certain fabrics. Yeah. So what do you mean by exclusives? So by exclusives, it means that no one else has my pattern, my print. So um, So I, do you design the print? I, no, I don't. I can't draw. I'm not a... <laughs> I can't. I, I tried. I have tried. Believe me, I went out and I bought an Apple pen. I've got apps and I tried drawing. But and it, you have to have it so that it's a seamless print. So it has to repeat yeah. and... I can't do the whole moving the pictures around to try and get it so I can fill in all the blanks. It's yeah, that's not my cup of tea. So the exclusives okay. I found were um, from 
someone on Instagram, I think it was, oh, wow. um, and she had already drawn loads, and I just gone and bought all of the all of the ones I like. So you bought the exclusive rights, effective later. Yep. But That's at the cool. moment, I, she I... is making one specifically for me. I've given her. I yeah. I've asked her for a specific design that I want. Um, I've since changed it twice before she's even started um, <laughs> because I've gone actually do you know what I don't I don't want animals this time around I want something else and then I went actually do you know what I don't want that either can I go back to animals and then I've gone back to something completely different so she was glad at the end of February when I've disappeared um, so yeah. I'm just waiting for the first print to turn up so I send off my prints to a company that prints my fabric for me um, I'm just looking for one that does organic fabrics because I do have a range of organic fabric as well uh, it's not my range it's uh, yeah, I buy it in. So yeah, what I love is I love how important that is to you. That it's sort of like a fundamental part of what you do. You're not, yes, you're making, and yes, you're making children's clothes, but it has to be the right fabric. It has to be the fabric that you. In fact, let me ask that as a question rather than make it as an assumption. Is it the fabric that you personally like, or do you buy fabric because you go, my customers will love that, or is it a bit it of both? It is a bit of both, very much a bit of both. Um, I also do ask Georgia her thoughts and opinions um, sometimes. Georgia's when... your daughter, yeah. She's your nine and a half year old daughter. Georgia's the <laughs> nine and a half year old daughter. So some of the fabrics are questionable. Um, but because she said she liked them, you, you do have to take this perspective that if a nine year old likes it, another nine year old might. But yeah. it also depends on how, whether or not, like I let my daughter pick her clothes and always have done. So when we before I did this, we'd go shopping. She'd pick her clothes if yeah. I weren't making her any. So obviously yeah. it all depends on whether or not it's the parent that's picking the outfit yes. or if it's the child picking it. So if it's the child, then obviously I sort of use Georgia as an, uh, she flicks through the sites and says, oh, I like that one, that one, that one. If it's a parent, I go down the whole parent route of, Actually, that's not really what I think someone might dress their kid in or something or their yeah. child in. It's um, the both, isn't it? And having both perspectives is a really good thing. I like that. Occasionally, I will put posts up on my social medias and say, oh, what would you like to see? Just to gauge the idea as well, because, you know, I just because I come from a farming background, I like all the farming ones. So, you know, not everyone's going to be, you know, someone that lives in yeah. London isn't going to be someone that might necessarily like farming they would be city yes. so therefore they might like city fabrics so you know it's putting up a, a question going who likes what but knowing what they like is really important to your business i like yeah. that is everything you do a pattern yes no no do you mean a pattern that i cut out and design no i mean a pattern as in the fabric pattern the fabric has a pattern let's yes yes I don't have much plain fabrics. I think what you've got now is a pattern and you're talking about different things and animals. Yeah, no, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that's totally fine because I, when I put posts up and I'm asking about patterns, sometimes someone will send me a message going, oh, but I really want a pattern as in, like, I want... A design. Yeah. A design, yeah. So, yeah. yeah, different ideas. Yeah, so everything is patterned. I do have some plain fabrics. Um, because again, some parents like contrasts. So, for instance, someone that has this in a romper will say that they want blue. I can't get my fingers to work. Blue as the cuffs, yeah, and the poppers. And someone else will go. Actually, I want the same fabric cuffs. So they want it all the same. So it depends. So I do have, um, but I'm, I don't like the plain. It's you. It. You like bright and colourful and happy and fun. <laughs> I really should have had some fabrics to hand to show you some of the really bright fabrics I've got. I've got some <laughs> cracking bright fabrics. Um, yeah. And I, I got, I've got extreme fabrics as well. So I've got cupcakes on one of my fabrics, um, which is on bright yellow fabric. So yeah, you can. How many different fabrics have you got? How many? Oh, what? How many different designs? Yeah. Um, oh my God. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28. 30. Oh my God, nearly 50. 50, oh, wow. 60. That's not including that's the your other current ones. ones. That's not including the ones that you've done, you've made, and you've you've run out of. Yeah. So, oh, I've probably gone through a hundred, over a hundred different fabric patterns. It's crazy um, because I don't always get them back in again either. It is literally once I've run out, I don't want it anymore. Have you got a dedicated space then? Because not only. Well, I'm there going, if you've got that much fabric, that's a lot of space to take up. It's a big investment as well for you to outlay. 
So have you got your own space where you work? So I do. Um, originally, um, we have a weird shaped townhouse house, but it's an old house. So originally I was on the top floor, which is three floors up. I'm been relegated to the cellar. Um, which we tanked out because we needed to move some rooms around. So I've been delegated, relegated to the cellar, which is great because actually I kind of like it. It's closer to the kitchen. Um, but I can't, couldn't, you can never find shelving food fabrics because yeah. they all come different lengths, different sizes, nothing. It's not a uniform shape or size. So um, the husband had to come home with loads of wood just before Christmas to make me my shelving unit because I wanted something specific made. I drew out... That was the only time I drew. I, I yeah, drew. The <laughs> only time I drew a picture and said, "This is what I want." Um, yeah. and he made it. Oh, fantastic! So yes, and that um, made a big difference to how you work. It does because it keeps it nice and tidy, and it's all stacked on a shelf. Whereas before, I had it in a drawer from underneath a bed. Okay. Right. Yeah. Uh, it, um, so yeah, that was on the sort of not on the floor, on a raised area in the cellar. Um, and yeah, so it was stacked in there because then I could still see it. It was sort of not stacked, lined up. But yeah, it's the shelving. It looks just so much prettier. Yes, because you had a big change in your business last year, didn't you? Go and tell us all about that, the becoming full time. <laughs> OK, this is the final time I'm going to talk about it because there's only so many <laughs> times you can tell this story. Um, yeah, so obviously lockdown, first lockdown. Um, I had to work from home from my job. Um, I worked in a high street bank, so I um, had to work from home, chatting to all you lovely customers. Um, so then I had to went back in August, I think, to work um, and walked in and said, here is my notice and gave them three months notice and walked out on the 19th of October, 24th of October. I don't know, October. Anyway, I um, walked out after... 16 years and 10 months and ta-da do this full time fantastic which if i remember correctly was ahead of your schedule it was something you'd always wanted to do but you were it was earlier than you'd kind of planned you were able to bring your plans forward it was majorly early i was i was thinking maybe at least another year or two before i had the chance um i worked limited hours anyway there i i only worked four days a week every other weekend and i had all the holidays off which is why i could how this could become a dream country because yeah. i had quite a lot of time off while looking after the child and she likes sewing as well so we do a lot of it together which is great um but yeah so now i do this full time which is amazing i have a little routine or did have until <laughs> third lockdown um <laughs> i liked my routine of taking her to school and coming home and yeah. doing it i've do you know what? You feel like a proper business owner. It's amazing. You are a proper business owner. <laughs> oh, thank you. Yes. You are. Finally. Oh, brilliant. So, sewing and your business is now everything you do. It's your, it's your full-time income. It is. It is my full-time income. So, um, yes. I, I. You almost look, still look a little bit shell-shocked by that. <laughs> there are times when you go, oh, my goodness. Um, actually... I am now responsible for bringing in it's you know I don't have that other bit anymore that yeah. fallback of the safety net this is it now so it does make you rethink as a business owner to actually you have to make an effort you can't just go oh do you know what it's Wednesday I'm just gonna not do anything or something <laughs> or it's Tuesday you know you yeah. but the great thing is that now I do this full time I can actually, in the days of when you could go to a school assembly, I can actually go to school assemblies. I could do sports yeah. day if they that never happen effect. ever again. Yeah, which is brilliant. And I love the fact that just before you said it was like a dream come true. I love that. It is. I now need to think of a new dream. So I don't, I don't know. I, <laughs> uh, I, I would think about a shop, but I think that's a bit too much. I have to wait for George to be at secondary school. And at that point, I want to be thinking about retiring, really. <laughs> I love that. And maybe a shop, opening a shop right now in the middle of a lockdown, not quite the best plan either. So, yeah, no, we'll be no, on for now. Um, so thinking about the fact you might have a shop at some point in the future or not, who knows? But where do you sell now? Where can people find you? So I sell on Etsy um, under, obviously, Sweet Kindred Clothing. I sell on Facebook. I have a Facebook page. I have an Instagram 
page too, um, which is getting so much better now. Um, I also <laughs> do rent a shelf in a physical shop in Bridge North. Now, my geography is not great, so I want to say that that is north of Devon, <laughs> where I am. And I want to say it's like a shorter area. Oh, yes. I kind of yeah. want to say that. Um, yeah. yeah, to a lovely lady. The shop is called Toadstools, and she's absolutely amazing. She has loads of different sellers in there. Um, I'm yet to go because obviously it is a bit of a round trip for me. Yeah. Not that I'm allowed right now, but obviously. Um, yeah, no, you bet. Um, brilliant, fantastic. So Etsy working really well for you right now? Etsy, yes, Etsy is doing amazingly well. Um, actually, to be fair, I don't even drive half of my traffic there. Um, wow. All my wonderful customers find me um, through, I'm assuming, Google search or searching on Etsy. Um, so, yes. And then I drive a little bit of the traffic there. Random question, really. But how many products have you got listed on Etsy? Because you mentioned before that you do things like um, if somebody wanted a plain fabric cuff, you could do that. Or if they want the same fabric and different things, which made me, makes me think you've got lots of variations going on. So that means there's lots going on on your Etsy shop. So, yeah, wow. Well, yes and no. So I have um, 160, 165, I think it, it was as of this morning, um, items, physical items, because obviously I don't just make rompers in this fabric. I make leggings, I make T-shirts, I make dresses. So, of yes. course, some of them are ranges. Um, I don't have the variations on Etsy so much. People will just message and say, actually, do you know what? Can I have this? And I go, actually, yes, you can. Or you can, but you might have to wait a week because I might need to get that colour back in because I've just run out of it or something. Um, yeah. For the, you know, if they want to coordinate in cuffs or anything like that. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, most of my customers actually just send me a message saying, could you do this? And I just reply going, yes, I can. <laughs> and then uh, think about it afterwards. <laughs> I do like that. So do you actually make it clear on your Etsy that they can contact you if you want something diff slightly different to what you're offering? Is that Yes. Um, in my descriptions, it does say if there's anything else that you would like or if there's an alternative you like, um, then do pop me a message. Um, but, you know, I, I will I'll reply to all the messages. And to be fair, normally every request that I've had has actually been doable it's not something that's completely out there um so yeah but it goes to prove doesn't it that customers want something different they want to be unique they want something that's in their head that not necessarily buying exactly what's on the shelf um so i love that i love that it's got that yes they're seeing something but contact me for something else and they do that a lot i like that yeah it's, it's amazing because even if someone says sends a message saying oh can i have so I had one customer who she's got twins so she's got a boy and a girl and she wanted the farm fabric but she wanted yep. blue cuffs for the boy and pink for the girl so that when they were out walking someone wasn't going to go oh look at both of your boys or you know yep. so that they can differentiate and then I've got another friend um actually who has become a friend now and she sends me the most random requests ever saying can you do this and I'm like yes I can and then there's someone else that will say actually in in that rainbow one can i have one pink leg and one yellow leg um <laughs> so no one ever has the oh, same outfit everyone has a different that. outfit which is what i love because yeah. even if you went somewhere you can still wear be wearing the same thing but it's not so marketing it's that thing it's that job that has to be done it's the one that well, you've got me kind of beating you down and telling you you've got to do it all the while but do you love it or hate it? Where does it fall? Which camp? I love it now. I absolutely <laughs> love it now that I know what I'm doing. Because <laughs> for the first, so I joined your wonderful club, January that, last the year. Handcraft, the Handcrafted Business Club. I'm not very good at normally getting the name in, but I'll get the name drop in this time. No, yeah, if you could, only because I don't want to get it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Me is known as Nicholas Club, and that is how I word it everywhere I go. I'm like, I'm part of Nicholas Club. And everyone looks at me and goes, who's Nicola? And I'm like... Oh, you don't need to know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's, it's the hand of Yeah, it's fine. Carry um, <laughs> <laughs> on. I've gone off on tangent a bit. Pre-joining that, I was part of your community, so that would have been 2019. Right. Um, I'm not sure how I come across your community, um, but I joined it, stalked you for six months, <laughs> and then you did the Make Dream 
believe. Uh, dream, dream to achieve challenge. That's it. That one last January. And then I was like, actually, do you know what? This is absolutely amazing. Um, and that is what has helped me be able to leave my job is because I've got a handle on my marketing. Before that, I was just doing random posts, bits and bobs. And do you know what? When you're knuckled down and told this is, you know, <laughs> you do this, no, kind of like, not, not like that. But if you do this, this is what will happen. And actually, this yeah. is what happened. Yeah. I fulfilled my dream because I did what I was told. With, you know, <laughs> you said <laughs> you, <laughs> you, it's kind of like a teacher, isn't it? But you know what? I'm, I know what you mean. I do know what you mean. You just give us the tools to figure it out. So once we figured it out, that's the best bit. The thing that I find with that happens is you either don't know what you're doing, so you don't do anything, or you're trying to do everything and it just becomes overwhelming and you just, it's firefighting and it's really, really random. Um, I yeah. just kind of go, we need that consistency and we need something that's doable that you actually can say, I can do that. That's doable in both yeah. ways. You can do it and it is doable that you can fit it in. And I think that's what we spent our time doing, isn't it? And it's brilliant that it's had that effect for you. It is. It's absolutely amazing. And I, to be fair, I was in the camp of the whole, um, I just did it sporadically. So that kind of explains why I was just sort of bimbling along. Now I'm kind of, I have a purpose. Yeah. So, well, you I have a purpose from when I joined the club, but you have that purpose. Yeah. Well, you, you take it seriously. You said it right now. You Yes, you were in a position to give up your job, but you're in a position to give up your job because you prioritise still doing the business when you weren't at the job. And now it's, okay, lockdown pandemic aside the routine is score run come home and work it's not that oh i can't be bothered today it's that that's your routine that's what you do um and it does make the world a difference i mean you don't want to create a business that becomes a job but you do need to almost treat it as a job for it to become a business i, I do like the fact as well that every day is different i'm not sewing the same stuff i'm not doing i'm not using the same fabric every day that's the difference bit as well so it doesn't become boring it it's not just a job it's you know it's not the same the only thing that i don't do so often now which i probably should do is still make georgia her clothes it's the only right. thing that sort of goes by the way and i'm like actually you, know what? you can have that in half term because I'm, <laughs> I'm i'm too busy doing customers orders or trying to think of new things new ranges yeah. you know getting new fabrics but you're teaching her other skills aren't you you're teaching her that you don't have to have a job you can have your own business I, she's learned to sew because of you there's so many things that you are teaching her otherwise she has sewn her own clothes before she's sewn leggings and a t-shirt last summer she absolutely loved it so um Fantastic. yeah and she says to me occasionally oh i'll take over your business one day and i'm like Do you know what? that's quite <laughs> nice to think that it might Tis. still go on for another 50 yeah. 60 years it'll be joe and georgia you'll be changing the name joe yeah. and georgia and then eventually it'll be georgia and if she has yeah. a child you know and actually to think that it could potentially go on and yeah. on yeah so that's quite nice so that's, just push that's in that amazing direction. yeah it's amazing when you think so you don't need the shop you just you need that you need that yeah I like that. If you had one tip for anybody else who was starting now or who had their own business, what would it be? Just from my perspective, <laughs> nail marketing right at the beginning. You, While you can have all your other bits in place, you know what you're doing because you clearly know what you're doing. That's why you're doing it. Actually, your marketing, if you get your marketing right at the very beginning, you don't necessarily have to wait years for dreams to come true. <laughs> you don't have to wait years for you know it to then become a viable business. I'm now a viable business in two and a half years or two years because yep. it's what happened. So actually, do you know what? It can be, it's a lot quicker if you get your marketing right in the first place. I think what I see with a lot of makers is you can spend so long sorting out your, your product in the background and getting all that perfect that you're not building up your audience. You're not making those connections. You're not listening to your customer and understanding them. And by the time you're ready to do that, you've kind of, almost given up because you feel like oh there's nobody there listening to me straight away so you have to kind of have it all running parallel um all at the same time you can grow as you grow your customers um, yeah that's what i found as soon as i started the nail the marketing it just it just flew i went from eight orders one month to 50 in november so march i had eight and it just doubled and increased all the time while i was doing the sensible marketing <laughs> as, opposed to, as opposed to the insensible 
um yeah so you have to go actually do you know what it then does happen yeah fantastic so that's my one tip nail your marketing first time round. I like that. Fantastic. Thank you so, so much, Joe. It's been lovely, lovely to chat to you. You Sweet are welcome. Thank you.